Hundreds of loud protesters packed the state capitol. One lawmaker staged a filibuster that lasted hours. That was quite a shocking day. Sitting up in that gallery with so much mayhem. Uh, the first thing that pops into my mind is an adrenaline that went through the whole day. I disagreed with uh, probably most of what she said, but uh, it was sort of the music of democracy. There were so many women there that were just ignited. It was democracy perverted by mob rule. The media and those on the left looked at her as this kind of great hero. The Texas State Center that everyone is talking about, Wendy Davis. Whereas we were all horrified. I think about the thousands of people who showed up. On that day, something really special happened. Not only figuratively were their voices going to be present in that conversation, but quite literally, they were the magic that happened at the end of the day. The aim we all understood was to close as many abortion clinics as possible. I would not have moved the bill if it was an effort to hurt women, to limit women. You know, as a physician, I felt it was important because I think it in many ways protected women who chose to have abortions. I felt it was important to have standards for clinics and have physicians credentialed by a hospital. We knew a filibuster was coming. Senator Bob Duell, uh, you know, warned that Senator Davis was both athletically fit, I think she's a runner, and she has the desire to do this. In the Texas Senate, we can only use a filibuster to talk a bill to the end of a legislative session. And when the clock strikes midnight and the session is over, if the bill has not passed, it's dead. When I walked out, I was trying very hard just to gather my thoughts, take a deep breath, and put my head down and get to work knowing that we had a long day ahead. I don't mind the filibuster. I don't mind Wendy Davis trying, but there was no exit strategy for the Democrats. How do you win? What I wanted to do before we start today is remind all of our guests in the gallery, and Senate rules prohibit outbursts on the floor and in the gallery. Senator Davis, is it still your, your intention to filibuster? Yes, Mr. President, I in intend to speak for an extended period of time on the bill. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, members. As we began to debate this bill... So when I started to speak, I set my mind to the fact that I was not going to look at the clock for as long as I could possibly stand it. You got a lot of time you got to fill up. So what are you going to talk about? What are you going to read? What are you going to, how are you going to make your points? I got to the Capitol and I saw everybody just buzzing and I ended up in the chamber. I didn't really understand what was happening until Wendy gave her opening statement and then started reading the letters from the women who had received abortions. One of the heart-wrenching moments for me during the filibuster was when Senator Davis would read letters talking about how important access to health care through Planned Parenthood was to them. I read a story from someone who shared having to make a very difficult abortion decision with a much wanted pregnancy after a fatal fetal abnormality was discovered. And that was hard to read because that was my story as well. It is very frustrating to feel like the choices you have made for your baby's life and death are not being respected. I understood why she was doing it. And I wish that there would have been stories read from women who had had abortions and now live with that regret because there are stories on both sides. That there are many women who will lose their access to care when there's a filibuster. You've got to be immaculate, not, not rest on anything to get any help, no food or drink, you can't leave the floor to relieve yourself. I had asked in preparation for two different senators each hour simply to pay attention and make sure that she followed the rules of the filibuster. And we actually had a little bit of fun with that at one point because we figured out whose time it was. And uh, Senator Ellis and I went over and purposefully stood in front of this person and acted like we were having a conversation so that it caused this person to have to lean back and forth. Typically, 
A filibuster receives tremendous respect from other members on the floor, whether they're with you or again you on that particular issue. I didn't expect that the Republican senators had gotten together and decided that no matter what, they would bring an end to that filibuster by the time the day closed. I asked a question under 4.03, the germaneness. It's my understanding that all questions... Anytime you're preparing for a filibuster, one of the things that, that you need to do is you need to figure out how they can stop your filibuster. One of the ways is the th three strikes rule. The debate needs to be kept to the subject of the bill. Here, I was talking about Planned Parenthood and previous cuts that had been made for women's access to reproductive care. I think most reasonable minds would agree that was a very germane conversation to be had. When the senators called a point of order, I sustained it. With the call of that very first point of order, I knew suddenly that I was up against what was going to be a really hard day. You know, there was a lot of scrutiny on her behavior, but that's always how it works. Everybody puts their magnifying glasses on the behavior of the person who's doing a filibuster. She was having trouble uh, with her back, so she needed help with a back brace. Uh, I certainly wouldn't have thought that it would have merited point of order. A filibuster is an endurance contest, and it's to be made unaided and unassisted. It became very clear that we're playing by a rule book that's being written as they go along to try to stop this. There was no changing rules. We didn't change anything, nothing. Is winning everything or do traditions in this body mean something to you? In the 27 years that I have served in the Texas Senate, I saw firsthand the traditions of this Senate to honor a person who was engaged in the filibuster. The point of order is sustained. The filibuster rules only allow two points of orders to be sustained. She does this again, it's over. My chief of staff came to me and he said, they've just called the second point of order on Senator Davis. They are gonna try to take her down. I remember getting a text that told me that the president was paying attention. And I took my phone over and showed Senator Davis. That's when I understood that something special was going on that, that people must be watching from all over the place. A hard-fought battle over abortion is going on right now in Austin. In it was shocking that the third strike was on something that was clearly germane. I was talking about the 2011 passage by the Texas legislature of a sonogram bill. The rules are very, very clear. You can only talk about issues that are germane to the bill. I wanted to break the filibuster, but I thought the reason that it was broken was a stretch. Your point of order is uh, well taken and is sustained. The chair recognizes Senator Hager for a motion. At that point, all common sense had been thrown out of the Senate chamber. But what it did is it put us in a position for what do we do next? I have a parliamentary inquiry. I, I've just recognized you twice. Uh, can you hear me? Mr. President, it's my understanding from your previous ruling that We had to eat up the clock. And that's where the incredible and masterful work of my Senate Democratic colleagues to eat up minute after minute after precious minute. Even with this draw, I've never talked so slowly in my life. I was trying to hold the floor and make my case, and that was when Senator Van De Pute, who had not been there during the course of the day, after having been at her father's funeral, that was when she made the comment heard around the world, and the whole dynamic of the chamber changed. At that point, it was way beyond this bill. It was, women, your opinions don't count. And that's what exploded in me, and that's what you saw in the gallery that night. The words just came out. At what point must a female senator raise her hand or her voice to be recognized over the male colleagues in the room? It became 
this thunderous, magical, most beautiful demonstration of what it means to live and participate in a democracy that I certainly have ever experienced. Of course people should have their voices heard, but there's a time and a place. The Senate chamber shouldn't be that place. This is not a basketball game. Whatever side you're on, you've got to respect the process. And that didn't happen that night. I was disappointed in my Democratic colleagues for encouraging the outbursts to stop the process. I did everything I could possibly think of to do, and the Democrats in the crowds responded to mob rule. I went out on the floor and I said, We're, I'm calling a vote right now. They couldn't get a vote. You, you didn't have a vote because of the, 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 the noise. We didn't finish that filibuster. Not Wendy, not me, not the Democratic senators. It was the people. Regrettably, the constitutional time for the first called session of the 83rd legislature has expired. Senate Bill 5 cannot be signed in the presence of the Senate at this time and therefore cannot be enrolled. It's been fun, but um, see you soon. There being 19 ayes and 11 nays, House Bill 2 is finally passed. Congratulations, Senator. The time passed. And uh, we came back and passed the bill in an hour or two. On the issue, the merits of the issue, of course we lost. The cards were stacked to begin with from day one against us on that issue. But I don't think that we lost completely. We clearly put a spotlight on that issue. If you just judge win and loss by whether a bill passes or fails to pass, you're not looking big enough. That night was the night I saw women find their voice and their purpose, and we're not gonna be afraid to speak out on behalf of our sisters. You know, the system worked. Wendy got her filibuster, and they had their, their victory. Short-lived, if you will, but yeah, you know, good for them. It didn't help them at the polls in the next election. Frankly, I, I suspect it won't be really remembered because at the end of the day, not only did she fail at stopping this piece of legislation, she failed at running for governor. People like winners. I see the evening as one of the ugliest nights in the history of the state of Texas, and something I'm ashamed of. Honestly, I would not be where I am today if it weren't for that night. It activated an entire new generation of young women who now follow elections and follow legislative session, so that way things like that don't happen again. The special session was called and the bill did pass into law. Even in that perceived failure, we gained something so much more powerful. Young women around the country tell me why that moment changed their lives. And that's really what matters. In fighting, we move the needle.